Welcome back. Another important lesson I'm going to demonstrate in this lecture, the concept of masking images, okay, or masking objects. Very important and handy. A little bit of intermediate stuff here, but I think it's important that you not only understand fundamentally the entire Figma concept and the various tools and how to create an effective design, but also learn some additional techniques and you can practice on that. So I'm not going to divulge too much into it, but at least I'm going to give you the, the starting point, okay, of how masking works, similar to how I provided you the in the previous lecture, the concept of, of merging images together, like creating a union, intersection, or selection, and so on. So let me go ahead and jump right in. So I'm going to first create a new frame, so it's easy for you to actually see. Here's my iPhone 8 frame that I'm using. I'm going to insert a couple of objects here. First, let's go ahead and do an ellipse tool. So hold the shift key down. I'm going to create that. And next, I'm going to also insert an image so you can actually see how masking works. So place an image. And let's say I'm going to choose this logo here. Perfect. So now I have these two objects, right? Or well, there's on my artboard. Notice at this point, if I take one of these layers, it just kind of goes behind and I can bring it to front and whatnot. And we've been doing that, right? What if I want to take this entire image and then kind of crop it down so that it fits the circle? So it's not a square anymore. And I can simply mask it so I'm only able to see the top part of the logo, not the text. I'm not interested in the text. I'm just want to mask the top part. How do I do it? Okay, very important and handy. Again, as you work with your app design and work with different images, this is extremely useful and helpful as well. All right, so to do masking, I need to first select the actual object not the image, but the actual object that I want to mask to. So for instance, if it's an ellipse or a rectangle or any polygon shape, it's going to take up that shape. Notice as soon as I select this particular shape on the top menu in the center is use as a mask. The shortcut is Control, Alt and M. So if I click on use as mask, notice on the left side, on the layers pane, now it says ellipse and then the blog e discovery is the image. So both of them are part of this mini group. So once I have this ellipse, which is in fact a mask, and notice an arrow pointing upward, right? So in other words, it's going to mask this particular blog e discovery. Next, if I select the image itself, and simply drag it and voila, we have a nice mask. If I drag more, obviously the text is also gonna show up, right? So within this particular circle, I can mask the image any which way I choose to do so. So here I'm just gonna mask this image right here and I have a masked image. So this is a good way you can mask images. Similarly, you can go ahead and practice with, let's say an image of a car you wanna mask, or maybe draw another shape that you wish to mask. So for instance, let me demonstrate another one. So here I have this image, I'm gonna delete this image, and I'm gonna use maybe another shape, right? So how about this star tool? So it doesn't matter which shape you have, as long as you have it masked, notice, select the shape first, use as a mask. And in this instance, notice you don't see an arrow, right? So if I select my image here, it's standalone, right? So if I drag this image now, it doesn't really mask it, right? Because I don't have the image inside the actual masked shape. Very important. 
because you're going to get stuck otherwise not masking right why is it not masking is because you do not have the arrow and you do not have the actual image inside the mask what i mean is simply drag this image inside the mask so now if i were to simply move it up notice now i get the actual arrow pointing upwards to the image which means now i have a mask okay so just as a word of caution, if it's not masking, that means you do not have the actual image that you want to mask inside the actual shape in that mini group. So this arrow kind of tells you exactly that this is going to mask. Perfect. So with this, a kind of helpful practice with different shapes and masking. And I hope this helps. Let's move to the next lesson.